CAA football fans, welcome back to our 11 Teams in 11 Days series. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Tim McDonald, and today we are previewing the main Black Bears, and it was sort of a rebuilding season for the Black Bears in 2012 who finished 5-6. and six. And Tim, they had a lot of new guys in new places on both sides of the ball, but there's a very strong feeling of optimism around Orno for the 2013 season, and a lot of that optimism is centered on an offense that returns starting quarterback Marcus Wojcicki, who was one of the top quarterbacks in the league statistically last season. I, I think the biggest thing that Marcus Wojcicki did for the Black Bears last season was not only be a stable guy under center, was it, I think it surprised himself how well he did last year as a starter. He mentioned he threw for 21 touchdowns, second in the CAA in total offense per game. I think Wojcicki is a guy who Cosgrove can trust and a guy who Cosgrove can count on this season to really step up and be a leader. He even talked about at the CAA media day about how he, he carried himself better in the mm -hmm. offseason because he knew he was going to be a starter. I think Wojcicki is a guy in this league who kind of came out of nowhere and is a guy to pay attention to this year. Head coach Jack Cosgrove spoke about his senior quarterback and what he expects from him in 2013. We're, we're real excited about Marcus. Uh, you know, he went into last year's game uh, our opener against Boston College is, uh, is really untested, great unknown. Uh, not only did he weather that game, but uh, you know had a, had a what I think is an outstanding season, uh, and not just to st statistically either. Uh, you know he's he's a young man who gained the experience and, and learned how to manage the game, make decisions on the field. You know handle the communication from the sidelines in the press box, you know and, and conduct a two-minute drill or a four-minute drill or whatever needed to be done. And he did it with poise and and, and that that experience that comes with playing the game and I, I think what we saw from him when that was all said and done was uh, really in the offseason program where now he carried himself entirely different than he had the previous offseason he's a guy who's been through the the battle of the CAA and and also the non-league uh, games that we played last year uh, had a great spring uh, he's one of the, the guys out front the entire summer been up up at Maine uh, uh, June July and, and, and ready to get ready uh, for our preseason coming up, he, he's really become a, a guy that we uh, look for tremendous things from. And it, one of the positive things for Wash Leslie coming back is, of course, he has his tight end, Justin Perillo. He's back for another year. He's, a, he's an All-American player. He's mm -hmm. the guy who just puts on white tape, doesn't need gloves, just comes out there, laces him up, and he goes and catches passes. That's, that's his job. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. Perillo's a guy who I think Wash Leslie, obviously, he, they have a lot of character together. They have a lot of... They have a great relationship on the field. Uh, another guy, Ricky Stevens, running back last year, rushed for over 800 yards. He only had two touchdowns, but still Maine was able to be productive offensively when people thought it was going to be a rebuilding year. Wasilewski, I think, and this Maine offense, I, they, want to, they want to move forward this year, and they want to prove that they're better, a step better than they were last year. And But one position they're going to have to fill this season will be at the wide receiver, then they will miss Maurice McDonald. I think that's where the teams are going to key in on Perillo because mm -hmm. they, we don't know who their stud wide receiver is going to be. Mm -hmm. We know that Ricky Stevens can catch some passes out of the backfield. We know that Perillo is always going to be there. That's the question. They're going to need to have some young guys step up, especially outside, for the, for the big, long field passes. Well, on the defensive side, you could say the same thing. This is a very talented and now veteran group. They do get a piece of that defense back with the return of Michael Cole, who was on pace for a monster year in 2012 before being injured. Uh, Michael Cole last year, at the end of the season, I think he missed six games. Mm -hmm. And Coach Cosgrove talked about how, how fueled he was in the offseason to get back onto the field. Even in spring ball, he didn't get to play that much. You're talking about one game last year where Michael Cole had five sacks yeah. against Delaware. I think everyone remembers that game. Finished the se season with seven sacks and now needs six and a half to break Maine's all-time record. I think this is a kid who's driven. It's a kid who's certainly going to be double teamed, which is good for his teammates. It's going to give guys on that line um, a lot of opportunity to maybe rush the quarterback, even though he's still going to try to get his own, too. And one game also that I remember last season from Michael Cole, and it's surprising we know all these highlights of Michael <laughs> Cole. He only played half the year. Boston College, you know, ACC team. Just dominated. He still didn't have any trouble, exactly. Yes, he's exactly. a big enough kid where he's going he's gonna to get to the quarterback without a problem. Let's hear from Coach Cosgrove on the return of Michael Cole to the lineup. Well, just, just the look in his eye, and I think I, I would say it to you the best this way. He's a young man who had something he truly loved taken away from him. You know, and, and you know, you hear young people all the time how tough football is and what a grind it is, and God, this sucks, you know, practice and, and those kind of things. But when you have it taken away, boy, that really impacts you. And Michael had to sit and watch six football games last year, and then all spring practice. He was, you know, in re recovery, rehab, all those type of things. But he couldn't get out and do something he loved. 
and it's really telling. You know, he's committed himself to the weight room, committed himself to the rehab program. Uh, we're going to have to be careful with him at the front end of preseason, just manage him uh, to the point where we're going to turn him loose and, and let him uh, help us get better. Coach Cosgrove is obviously very excited to have the services of Michael Cole back in his defense. Tim, to me, this team has many of the makings of a dark horse in this league. The Black Bears seem to have a good balance of playmakers on both sides of the ball. They do have a few question marks on the offensive side of the ball, especially in the offensive line after having to replace a few starters, in addition to their need for an emergent wide receiver in 2013. What do you expect from the main Black Bears this season? I expect a team that's hungry, a team that's hungry to prove themselves once again. And I think that's just the way that Coach Jack Crosgrove likes it. He likes to have a team that isn't maybe highly touted in the preseason polls, that isn't talked about. He likes to have a team that can surprise some guys. They can go to, on the road and they can play. Of course, you look at that schedule. Man, that schedule is absolutely brutal in the early season. Two FBS opponents, four out of their first five games are on the road. I think the key for them is getting off to a fast start. Uh, Maine is a team, like I said, who can, who can surprise some people, and I, I think they're going to be a step up better than they were last year. Well, Maine opens its 2013 campaign on the road at Norfolk State on Saturday, August the 31st at 6 p.m. before heading to Foxborough the following week to take on former rival UMass, a game that will be televised live on ESPN3. We will resume our 11 teams in 11 days on Monday with CAA football newcomer Stony Brook as Chuck Priori's Seawolves look to make a splash in their new home in 2013. For Tim McDonald, I'm Bobby Broyles. Have a great weekend, everyone.